welcome to worship. Um, I'm Pastor Bonnie, and on behalf of Pastor Mark and all of our team here, we welcome you to Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. We are gathered here this morning to worship, to hear about God's love being poured out into our hearts so that we can go and pour that love out wherever we are. You are encouraged to share the peace in the comments section, to greet one another in the comments section. And we are really excited this morning because we are preparing to come back to gather together in in-person worship on likely on uh, June 27th and 28th. And you can find more information about that on our website. So um, now we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. <laughs> Please join me in the call to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad.
continue with our confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into all hearts, that overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. reading Psalm 100 responsibly. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's, God's presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God, our maker to whom we belong. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving and in the courts with praise. Give thanks and bless God's holy name. Good indeed is the Lord, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from age to age. A reading from Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment. Give without payment. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. At this time, I'd like to invite our children to come forward if you want to come a little closer where you are for this children's message. Now, in the Gospel today, we heard Jesus talk about this crowd, how they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. When I was first talking with some of the people here at Holy Trinity about the idea of maybe being the pastor here in this place, one of the people asked me, will you shepherd us? And I have really tried my best and will continue to try to shepherd the people here at Holy Trinity and throughout our community. And sometimes people here do look at me as pastor being the shepherd. And now also with Pastor Bonnie, with Pastor Bonnie being a shepherd. But the reality is, neither one of us truly are the shepherd. There is only one true shepherd, and that is Jesus Christ, our Lord. So a couple weeks ago, Mr. Rabbit was right. Over half the time, it seems like in children's sermons, the answer is Jesus to almost any question. But I want to tell you also... The same thing is true for you in life. For so many things, the answer is Jesus. Right now, we are at a time when adults, when so many grown-ups are struggling to ha how to do what's fair and right for people, and then also struggling with how to be out and about or not during this pandemic. A lot of adults right now aren't sure what to do. And for all of us, if we try to live Without Jesus, we are all truly lost sheep. And so I know you look to the adults in your life for guidance, and I want you to continue to do so. But there's that one other person also to continue to look to. So in the midst of all this that's happening, maybe give a little patience to those grown-ups as they're trying to figure out what to do, too. For a lot of us, a lot of these things are for the first time for us as well. But continue to listen to your parents. Continue to listen to your teachers and your pastors. But above all, follow Jesus, your true good shepherd, for he will never, ever lead you astray. Amen. Thank you so much for coming up. Have a great week, and we'll transition now then to our sermon for the grown-ups, where you are very invited to listen to too. All right, so for this, I admit the opening little part that I'm trying to have a little bit of humor in an otherwise potentially heavy sermon, 
I admit that I might have stolen just a tiny, tiny bit from a Jerry Seinfeld stand-up uh, <laughs> to do this. So when we think about lockdown for us now, I mean, it, it's tough for people because people don't like to be in the same place. People like to go. We're never happy to be in wherever we are. We want to just go somewhere else. And we go all over the place. If you're a student, you go to school. If you're an adult, you probably go to work. Then what do you do after you go to work? You, well, after a while, you want to go home, right? And then what happens after you go home? It's time to go to work. You go back to work. Then you go home. And then what do you want to do? Well, you know, I really want to go out, right? You want to go out and do something, so you go out and do something. What do you do after you go out and do something? Eh, it's getting kind of late. What do you think about? Got to get going, right? Time to get back. Got to get back to the house, too. Then you want to go on a trip. So you go to the airport. You go to an airplane. You're up in the airplane. As soon as it lands, you want them to open the door right away. Why? Because you're ready to go. And so the same thing is often true, I find, with pastors as well. Like, for instance, with the, um, with the annual Senate Assembly, it comes only once a year. And it's for all the pastors, for all our lay leaders in our church, the bishops there, the assistants to the bishops are there, the whole synod council are there. Basically, the church in our southeastern synod is there. And it happens for a weekend. And, of course, ahead of time leading up to it, what do I hear from some of my pastor friends? Are you going to the assembly? I'm going to go to the assembly. Are you going to go to the assembly? Yeah, I'll probably go to the assembly. What about you? Are you going to the assembly? And we all talk about going to the assembly. And we're going to, you know, get there and go to the assembly. There's this whole big assembly happening. So we go to the assembly. And ahead of time, too, We'll have these supply pastors be all set so they can have worship while we go to the assembly. They can be at our churches and preach. But invariably, what happens near the end of the assembly while it's still going on? I'm hearing all my friend, fam, uh, pastor friends, man, I, 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 I got to go. I got to get going. All right, hold on a second. This is a synod assembly. Everybody's there. You've already had somebody to preach for you. You're a pastor. What in the world do you really have to go to right now during the assembly? So I've always just thought that was kind of hilarious. And, of course, that's how we are, though. We are a sense people. We have this, this, on this instinct of wanting to go. And if you can't tell yet, that's the theme for today's sermon. It is the word go. And in today's gospel, we hear that very word three different times from Jesus. Jesus, who looks out over those crowds and sees them harassed and helpless and like a sheep without a shepherd, and he has compassion over them. He wants to send out these laborers, right? The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So he calls these disciples to go, to go out, and there are three different goes. And the first go might seem a little bit unusual. Go not into the Gentiles, nor enter any town of the Samaritans, but then the second go, go, you go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and then go proclaim the good news that the kingdom of God is near. Those are those three goes that the disciples are called to do. Well, I want to talk a little more about the gospel and how that might seem to fit for us, but I'm going to save that for a little bit later. First, I want you to go with me on a short story about what happened recently. And I want to take you with a guy named Darren Lee. He decided to stand up and go. It was the first night of protests over the horrid and tragic and terrible and completely unnecessary death of George Floyd. And he was there, African-American man, to stand up and go and be a part of that protest with so many others. Well, that same night, there were also police officers who were called to go to try to help keep the peace. And one of those officers was in a car where they had been surrounded by protesters who, at least according to the officer there, had started pounding on the, the windshield and also on the hood, and he'd call for backup. Another officer by the name of Galen Henshaw decided that he would go and help and support his officer. But as soon as he came in on foot, he realized very quickly he was also basically surrounded. And he put his back to a wall so that no one could come behind him for fear that he might get jumped. But there was the crowd surrounding him and yelling at him and questioning him. And are you one of them too? Who are you? And so then here is Darren going down the street walking. 
and he's part of this protest. Mask on, ready to go protesting. A black man protesting against the unnecessary death of a black man by a white police officer. And who does he see over to the side? But what appears to be another white police officer, and this time on his own by himself. This is Galen Henshaw. Now to complicate things just a little bit, and of course we often see things just in black and white, Galen actually is half Pakistani, which brings all kinds of other possibilities into it. But for all of us as children of God, really we are much more a kaleidoscope than just an either or kind of person to begin with. So for all these things, when we oversimplify, may we go deeper and deeper as we look for solutions. But in Darren's eyes, and from my eyes looking, more than likely what he saw was another white police officer. What did he do? He noticed that he was by himself. And he noticed that there was another African American in a red mask, another protester walking down the street, who also had seen this police officer by himself in a precarious situation there, being surrounded. And that guy in the red mask came up and put himself between the rest of the crowd and the police officer. And when Darren saw that, he said, even without thinking about it, he just reacted and went right up beside him and did the same thing. And another person came up too, and Darren said, let's link arms together. And they did. To me, it was one of the most amazing things. Also, another person who was the Dominican background, Julian de la Cruz, he said, I saw what seemed to be a, a weak link in the chain, and I went up too. He was probably the third or fourth man to go up. And there they were, arms locked. What was so amazing about that to me? They were the ones protesting. They looked like the person who'd been killed. I'm sure they have family too and stories. The person they protected to them was a representation of all wrong that had happened. And that's the person they reached out to. And when you hear what Darren said, again, he said he wasn't sure why he did it. He wasn't even thinking about that. He just responded. But he said, that's somebody's son. That's somebody's loved one. That's someone's child. And then when Julian talked about why he was there and what he did, and he said, I needed to be able to, you know, marching with my brothers, but I need to be able to turn, even if it means turning over against them to say, this is not right. And as you can imagine, both Darren and Julian and others, as soon as they had turned, they faced the same yelling at to, what are you doing? Why in the world? Why are you protecting him? What are you doing? The very people they had been marching with turned on them as well. Each of them were afraid. The police officer said later he was totally afraid. He also believes for sure they saved me. That night they saved me. There wasn't actually one punch even thrown. But each of the men at least who were interviewed as well as the police officer all thought that it was so tense and getting so close they were all afraid that perhaps a first punch was about to happen and if it did the whole thing would just break loose. And so all were afraid as they were standing there, but they stood their ground. One thing it reminds me of with Darren, too. Do you remember Jesus earlier when he sees the crowds and, and he has compassion? For they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Darren, this African-American man who was protesting, looked out, and I believe with his eyes looked out, with the eyes of Christ. And he saw someone who was being harassed and helpless. And even though he was part of this crowd and this movement that he believed in, at the very same time, a part of him said, this is not right. And he came to that lost sheep. So in him, I also see Christ. And Julian would go on to say too, for him needing to be able to do that, to stand over and against, he said, that should be the norm. He said, what we did, yeah, it was great. It was awesome that night, but so many other awesome things happened in Louisville. And by the way, that protest was completely peaceful the whole time. Never was one punch thrown. And I believe these gentlemen, these Christ in our midst, helped that to be able to happen. So Julian also said, 
you know, for justice, for all this to happen, we need to be able to stand up, even if it means turning over against our brothers. And the police, who are the good police out there, they need to be willing to do that too, Julian said, to turn like this and say, no, this is not right. And as we think about what just happened in Atlanta here so near us on Friday, and we think about another black family suffering and mourning a loss, the Brooks family, those words of Julian are great words to remember for us and our sense of inspiration. Are we willing to stand up, to go? And even when we are in these crowds, and maybe for the crowd for us, it's a crowd that also has our support and our backing, and maybe it's people that look like us and believe like us. When we see someone who is harassed and helpless, when we see a lost sheep, especially if it is someone who in any way is not like us, perhaps doesn't look like us or is not from the same place that we are. May the Spirit of God inspire us also to reach out, to stand up and go. May our prayers be with them, and prayers do matter. Don't let people belittle your prayers. Some say prayers don't make any difference. They do. But we are also called, along with our prayers, to share our voices, and along with our voices, to act, to go, to do. May we be inspired to act and go and do as these children of God have. And one other thing about them, the, the first guy to come up, and we don't know about him, at least I don't, because in the article, he hasn't been identified. All we know is he is an African-American man with the red mask. But I saw a picture of him. His skin looks very dark, and mine looks very light. His hair and my hair look really, really different. His eyes and my eyes look really different. I hope and I pray that my heart is very much like his heart. May we all be inspired. Every single life is precious especially those that are different from us in this time and age, may these acts encourage us also to pray, to speak, to stand, to go, and to make a difference. Now, coming back to the gospel, how does that speak to us and help us to do this? And we might say, listening to Matthew 9, well, wait a minute, Pastor Mark, it sounds almost kind of like the opposite of what we heard from Darren and from Julian and from the others there. I mean, they reached out beyond themselves to someone totally unlike them. It was basically this example from Christ to love your neighbor, to not love your neighbor, love your enemy, not just your neighbor. So what is it when we look and hear back in Matthew 9 for Jesus to say to the disciples, go not to the Gentiles, nor enter a town of the Samaritans, but just to the house of Israel and the lost sheep to the house of Israel. It almost sounds like protect your own. Don't worry about others different from you. Share the good news about the kingdom with people like you. And isn't that a natural thing with human nature sometimes in our fears that we might feel more comfortable doing? It's just sharing the message of good news with people who are more like us. And if Matthew finished that chapter, we might be able to look back on Matthew and say, well, you know, maybe, maybe that's what it's about. Just protect your own. Hmm. But that's not how Matthew ends. Matthew ends with the 28th chapter. And the gospel writer Matthew knew as he was writing this in the words of Christ here what those very final words of calling and sending and go would be from Jesus. And that final sending to the very same disciples after Jesus had risen from the dead and, and as he was going to ascend to the Father, it was go make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So going first to the house of Israel wasn't just protect your own and blow off everyone else. Maybe, maybe as we look at Matthew 28, since it is for all God's children, for every single precious life, maybe it is more this which fits with the whole story. Look first, if you want to make a difference in the world, 
if you want to do something transformative in God's name, then don't just look so far out there first and yell out for what people should do. Look first at your own house and look to make transformation in your own house. Look to the mirror deeply within yourself and ask God to mold you, to shape you, to change you. If you want justice and reconciliation and peace and mercy and love, pray for those things deeply to reside within you, to be able to see more clearly with God's eyes and not just your own. And every sermon I preach, I try to preach to me too. So this is for each of us. If we want to make a difference in the world, then let us pray. And if we want peace, as that great song says, then let it begin with me. We have good news of great joy to share with the whole world. Jesus says to us, go. Go, therefore, to all nations to prepare us for this journey. Lord, may your spirit work within you and within me. Let's go.
one voice, we share our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the We join our hearts and minds in prayer together to God. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Holy One, you bring us together and call us your own. Bless theologians, teachers, and preachers who help us grow in faith. Guide your church that we might be a holy people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, the whole earth is yours. Where there is fire, bring cool air and new growth. Where there is flooding, bring abatement. Where there is drought, bring rain. Inspire us to care for what you have provided. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Holy One, we have created the visions that you will not own. In places of conflict, raise up leaders who work to develop lasting peace and reconciliation. Encourage organizations and individuals who care for all of God's children. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy One, you care for those who are harassed and helpless. Protect and defend those who are abused. Heal those who are sick. Feed all who hunger. Empower all whose voices go unheard. And help us respond with love and justice and mercy to our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Holy One, you provide a plentiful harvest of gifts and resources. Prepare us to labor and gather the fruits of this congregation that we might discover new ways of living. Minister to us in our work that we do not lose heart. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, O Lord, the prayers of your people which we offer before you now, both spoken aloud and from the silence of our hearts. For the Floyd family, for the Arbery family, for the Brooks family, for every African-American family who has lost a loved one, for every black life that has been lost, for every life that has been lost, for every life, Lord, in your eyes is precious. For justice and change where there is police brutality and overreach, also protection for those who protest, keep them safe, both from any violence and also from the virus. And for those who go with good hearts to serve our community as officers, that you also keep them safe. And we pray for those officers who have been killed, especially the ones who came in with good hearts to protect and serve and gave their lives. I pray also because every life is precious, that especially in large cities where there is such black on black violence and death, 
that you bring a sense of peace and that we all know that every black life, that every life is precious. And that you change us, Lord, that you change our hearts, that we with eyes and hearts and hands like you might hold your people in our hearts, all your people. Lord, in your mercy, Hear Holy One, you bring all people to yourself. We give thanks for the holy people who have gone before us. Sustain us in your mission until the day you bear us up and join the saints in light together as one body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, Hear receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us together to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Whoever you are, wherever you are, you are a precious child of God. May God's peace be with you now and always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of God's peace together with each other. Peace be with you. God's peace be with you. Peace be with you wherever you are. God's peace. Now we continue with our tithes and our offerings. And for our offerings, thank you so much to all of our members of Holy Trinity who have given so faithfully during this time of pandemic and change and uncertainty. We are so appreciative of your faithful gifts. It gives us a sense of faith and hope too, just knowing that we are all here together. Also for all of our visitors and guests, thank you for those who have given to us as well. You are welcome to give if you would like. It's holytrinitymarietta.org. There are various ways to be able to give. But whether you choose to give here or anywhere else that you see as a heartfelt ministry where God is leading and changing, for there are so many, many ministries that are, we just ask that you reach out and give of yourself in some way as an offering, because that is part of who we are as God's children. And we are more full and more whole and have a sense of more purpose when we give and share of ourselves. We receive our tithes and offerings.
Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.